Jesus describes us as salt and light of the world. He's explaining our calling to serve him in the world without being God. That we are salt and light is already a sign of God's love for us and those around us. But we need to recall that salt cannot season itself. And light cannot illuminate itself either. Again, if Jesus has described us as light, salt and light of the earth is because he has called us to be that in the world, and especially to those in consecrated life. Last Sunday, we heard these words of the Lord, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Although Jesus presents mercy as a reward for the merciful, in order to love, we need to recognize that God has loved us first. Si el llamado del Señor Jesús es hacer en el mundo, ama a la humanidad. Y entonces se entiende el porqué este llamado. Porque Dios nos amó primero. Jesus have loved us first. And so then we love in return. Pope Francis warned us against the disease he calls the spirituality of the mirror. Here we have many religious communities. I hope that in None of you have the spirituality of the mirror in what that we will just see ourselves, ourselves. Each one of us through baptism was turned into salt and light for others not for ourselves, for others. El mundo necesita de esta sal y de esta luz. We keep and increase our light and our flavor through love. When love is not there,
It's like when salt goes bad. Or when the sun will not come out. So through love, we also give faith and hope, and in turn, they grow in us. In the first reading, the book of Isaiah says, share your bread with the hungry. Shelter the oppressed and the homeless. Clothe the naked when you see them, and do not turn your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn. You sisters, you have been responding to this word of God. And I'm sure all of you, people of God, through the works of mercy, a través de las obras de misericordia, hemos compartido nuestro pan con los hambrientos, casa a los oprimidos, a los que no tienen hogar, hemos vestido a los desnudos, no hemos dado la espalda a los necesitados. Y en, en vez that darkness covers the earth, you have brought light into the world. We are. Our light comes from prayer. Our soul is like a solar battery, and our sun is Christ. So, how do we charge the battery of our soul? How do we charge it? Put it in under the sun, putting ourselves in under the light of Jesus in prayer. That is the only way. Otherwise, our light makes our hearts like this. When he's dim, when he's fading away, instead, a true prayer our heart is enlightened and gives light, light, light. St. Paul tells the Corinthians that when he felt weak and fearful, he did not base his preaching on human wisdom. Rather, he came in weakness to allow the power of the Holy Spirit to work through him. The calling is not to be weak, But our reality, our humanity, shows that many times we are weak. And it is by the power of the Holy Spirit that the wisdom of God comes through. Sometimes, that um, weakness or darkness or could be because lack of health, because a difficult time, because 
Sometimes being up in age is not that easy. But as we pray, we charge the battery and we can continue in the light of the world. The light of the world. So Jesus says that a city set on a mountain cannot be hidden. Of course not. Here in Texas, at least in this part, we don't have too many mountains. So we don't know about it. But you can picture a mountain and a house on top. Cannot be hidden. The Holy Spirit wishes us to become weak through our trust in him to bring the light of Christ to the world. He will make the light noticed. So it's not the one who pretends, who tries to show off, to be the center, to be eccentric. No. They don't show light. And even in some times, even people, they don't want to be close to people who are narcissistic and eccentric. And they need to be attended to, but, but it's just a natural reaction. So as we celebrate the World Day for Consecrated Life, we pray for all the women and men who have made commitments in the consecrated life. And we thank them for their dedication to the mission of Jesus in the church and in the world. So, people of God, you can see all these religious, you can see Bishop Pfeiffer who belongs to an order, Bishop Hoel to another order, Father Frank, yeah. Father Jorge. Yeah. We are so grateful to all these communities who have been settled in San Antonio, showing light and giving flavor the true and holy salt to our people, to our homes, to our families, to our schools, to our nursing homes, to the, our prisons. As consecrated people, let us take to heart the Pope's invitation to consider each person, including ourselves, as a mission. So no matter the color of skin, doesn't matter how many abilities, doesn't matter the age, the infirmities, each and every one of us need to understand ourselves as being in a mission. And he says that our mission is enriched by the charisms of institutes and societies, the charisms of our founders, the Pope wrote, in their remarkable variety, they all gave themselves for the edification of the church and for her mission. All charisms are for the mission, of, and they are precisely so 
with incalculable richness of their variety. So they are all kinds of sisters, all kinds of brothers and priests in the world. And new communities are emerging. In other words, religious life, consecrated life, is a need of the world. And the Lord is and will continue providing for. So that the church may bear witness to and proclaim the gospel to everyone in every situation. As we are here, there is a retreat this weekend at the Cordy Marion House in which there are about 27 young men and women who seriously are looking for consecrated life and priesthood. So it's a blessing that God still calling people to serve him. May the Virgin Mary obtain for us the grace that our life as consecrated persons always be a feast of the encounter with Christ. That Christ be present in our midst. And in this way, like the Blessed Mother, we may bring the light of his love to everyone. His light, no ours. Bring him, no ourselves. But you people, families, what an opportunity is for you to promote in your own families vocations to priesthood and consecrated life. Many times we just heard the bad news. And yes, it is true. We have been bad bishops in the church. They have been bad priests in the church. And men and women in consecrated life. But we should not center on the storm. But in Jesus. As there are, if it's about marriage, so many marriages that sadly they don't work. But let us center ourselves in Jesus, the Savior of the world, the light of the world. Centrarnos en Jesús y su misión. Y entonces, hay mucho bien que hacer. Y aunque sean poquitas obras, pequeñas, pero son valiosas. Por ejemplo, esas perlitas de oro, esos diamantitos, son chiquitos. They are small, very valuable, aren't they? May we, through works of mercy, center in Jesus, be truly light in the world and salt of the earth. Now, I invite Sister Elizabeth Ann, who is the, the 
Director of Consecrated Life in the Archdiocese of San Antonio, to lead our sisters in the renewal of their promises, their vows, today. Sisters and brothers in consecrated life, I invite you to please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wholeheartedly renew and confirm my religious vows to follow Jesus in poverty chastity and obedience in my religious community. Loving God, I ask you for the grace to remain faithful to my call, responding generously and joyfully to my vocation. I ask this through the intercession of Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Y ahora en español, hermanas. En el nombre del Padre, y del Hijo, y del Espíritu Santo, renuevo y confirmo de todo corazón mis votos religiosos para seguir a Jesús pobre, casto y obediente en mi congregación. Padre bueno, te pido la gracia de permanecer fiel a este llamado, respondiendo con generosidad y alegría a mi vocación. Te lo pido por intercesión de María, la Madre de Dios y Madre nuestra, y en nombre de tu Hijo Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Unidos a todos los demás religiosos y religiosas, que están en actividades de servicio pastoral, aquellos que están trabajando en el retiro, aquellos que están o están enfermos o enfermas y que no pudieron salir, a todos aquellos hermanos y hermanas nuestras en la vida consagrada, expresemos nuestra gratitud, nuestro cariño con un fuerte aplauso. I haven't been asked to speak, but I need to mention, he didn't mention it, our own Archbishop is a member of a beautiful religious community, Holy Spirit. He has manifested the Spirit in his ministry through that charism as he guides the church here in San Antonio. I think what we need to do to show our support for him, let's give him a big prayerful applause. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, that the only visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial to the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death, was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Challenged to be God's salt and light in the world, we ask him to hear our prayers. For Pope Francis, may the Lord continue to inspire him in sharing the message of God's mercy and his desire for people to know and love him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work for justice, may the Holy Spirit give them courage and guide them in shining the light of truth among the powerful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel despair, may God lift a cloud of darkness and fill them with hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may the Lord help us to be the light and salt he calls us to be. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially those lives lost because of war, mass shootings, violence, and natural disasters. May God welcome them into the shining glory of the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those living the consecrated life as religious priests, sisters, and brothers, may God continue to nurture their call to serve God as they dedicate themselves to be a light of Christ in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal petitions, for those who have asked for our prayers, for those whose names are written in our prayer request book, and for those who have recently died, Eustolia Pedrosa, Sophie Arciniega, Henry S. Garcia, Armando Andy Ceballos, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the special intentions of this Mass, for the repose of the souls of Michael Garza and Olivia Pereira, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Señor Dios nuestro, que has creado los frutos de la tierra para ayuda de nuestra fragilidad, concédenos que también se conviertan para nosotros en sacramento de eternidad. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion of our misery, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as with our end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, let it do fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo, our Archbishop, his auxiliaries, Michael and Gary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Luke, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Usually we ask sisters to pray for us, or priests, or bishops. But Jesus taught us all to pray with him, and in him, and through him. Let us together Pray to our Father in heaven, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us peace and unity in accordance to your will. You who live and reign forever and ever, Amen. may the peace of Christ the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other He's with you. He's with you. He's with you. He's 
Is it with you? Is it with your cube? I forget to say your name. Is it with you? Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion prayer Bye. song in the Blue Gather hymnal is number 946. Let us be bread.
Let us join together now and sing number 951. 951. This is the body of Christ. <laughs> Let us pray. Señor Dios, que quisiste hacernos participar de un mismo pan y un mismo cáliz, concédenos vivir de tal manera que, hechos uno en Cristo, demos fruto con alegría para la salvación del mundo. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. A very special thank you to the St. Luke's Parish community for welcoming us and hosting us and allowing us to celebrate World Day for Consecrated Life with you. A very special thank you. <laughs> to Father Joel Quesada, Jorge, they are missionaries to the Holy Spirit, Religious Order of Men to Sandra Perez and Patsy Bauman, who helped me, and Wayne Romo, they helped to prepare this beautiful liturgy and to welcome us. For the choir, thank you so much for your music. (laughs) 
A heartfelt thank you to Archbishop Gustavo, a member of a religious order of consecrated men, and for Bishop Mike, also a member of a religious order of men, Bishop Mike Pfeiffer, thank you for your presence as well. And we have several religious orders of men here also. We have some Oblates and Marianists and, of course, the missionaries of the Holy Spirit. Um, we are so blessed in this archdiocese to be able to come together and to give praise and thanksgiving for the gift of vocation, particularly to the consecrated life. Since COVID-2020, the Archdiocese has not been able to celebrate our jubilarians. Uh, so today I invite our jubilarians, men and women, in consecrated life who have celebrated a milestone, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and 60, if we have anyone present, to please stand so we can acknowledge you. Religious sisters and brothers who have celebrated a jubilee. We give praise and thanks to God for your fidelity, your joy of perseverance. May the Lord be gracious to you and grant you many more years in God's service. Today we have about 125 religious communities of sisters present. So the sisters and brothers, please stand if you belong to a community of consecrated life. Thank you. That's about 125 of us present, 28 communities represented. We also want to acknowledge that we are very blessed to have some newer members to religious life, to consecrated life, in initial formation. We, I, I think we have some novices here with us. Would you please stand if you are novices with us? And we also have sisters in temporary vows and who recently professed perpetual vows, if you would please stand. As Archbishop mentioned, right now we are in unity with our sisters and brothers who are hosting a life awareness religious vocation discernment at the Cordemarian Convent. There are about eight religious communities represented there, and they are joining us in prayer. So in that spirit, I would in like, invite all of us in consecrated life to please join me in praying the prayer for abundant hope. Holy Spirit, stir within us, filling our hearts with abundant hope, granting us a glimpse of what is possible reminding us at any one moment there are a million ways to hope. Embolden inquirers to take the next step in responding to God's invitation. Enliven each associate and volunteer in mission. Ignite meaningful conversations among discerners and vocation ministers. Encourage those in initial formation and their formators, enkindle hope in those renewing vows and celebrating jubilees. Nudge all leaders who encourage us to reimagine borders. Help us to serve with grace and unwavering hope, embracing each day filled with possibility. Amen. Thank you again, Archbishop. Please rise. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace, pronounce the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn of praise is 590, 590, Christ be our light. Thank you. 